In a previous video, I covered setting up a CPU server. This is a machine with no monitor or hard drive that just does number crunching. I mentioned in the history lesson at the start of this series about the trend towards personal workstations, how personal uh, computers became you know, even more powerful machines. Uh, maybe you don't really need a dedicated CPU server just to provide a powerful CPU for your grid. But CPU servers can fill many roles in a Plan 9 grid. The original Plan 9 grid concept had three kinds of systems, a dedicated file server to hold all the programs and data, a CPU server with multiple processors to crunch data, and simple diskless terminals for user interaction. On Ninefront, this has been simplified down to just CPU servers and terminals. The basic distinction is that terminals have a monitor and are used for user interaction, and CPU servers run headless and start listeners by default to grant access over the network. And it is possible to blend these. You can run a combined terminal file server in a single machine. You can start listeners on a terminal to allow outside access. And when it comes to CPU servers, you aren't bound by the original concept of a machine with powerful CPUs. You know, the file server is just a CPU server with hard drives. You know, in particular, the one I have on my grid uses a rather low powered CPU. Uh, so rather than CPU, just think of it as any sort of computer resource that is accessed over the network rather than at a machine with a keyboard and monitor. So for my demonstration, I'm using a computer um, with rather meager specs. This is a Raspberry Pi 3B. It has a quad core ARM CPU, tops out at a bit over like a gigahertz. It only has a gig of RAM and the storage is like a little SD card um, that I'm not really going to use very much because SD cards don't last very long under a load. Uh, but Raspberry Pi offers a lot of interesting accessories and this one has a bunch. So it has a combination uh, temperature, humidity, and CO2 sensor, uh, an LCD display that does four rows of text, and a uh, GPS unit, which I will use to fetch time signals. Since the Raspberry Pi can't pixie boot, I do use the SD card to hold the kernel and NVRAM, but it's basically just being used in a read-only sense. And also because the Pi has a very, shall we say, unique way of booting, uh, the Plan 9.ini boot configuration is stored on the SD card as uh, the command line.txt file. So I've done the steps to set up my Raspberry Pi as a CPU server. I have an entry for it in uh, libndb local so that our systems can see it. And since my um, central file server runs a DH, uh, DHCP server, it'll uh, assign it that IP address. And since it has a name, I can just sort of ask for it by that name on the grid. Uh, also using the config system here, I set up some stuff to run um, at the when it boots up. So while there are powerful ARM-based machines that do exist, this is not one of them. I don't intend this to you know, be a you know, powerful number crunching CPU server. But I can now access it um, as a system on the grid here. So really all I'm interested in is that the thing is running headless. So the Pi is running, it has no mouse, monitor, keyboard hook to it. It just has network listeners. So I can access it just directly. Um, I can run Rio on it. Everything in this window is running on the Pi, but is using the mouse monitor and keyboard of the, uh, the thin T uh, terminal. And I can use the thing directly like this if I want. You know, I could just sort of have it be another sort of system running on my grid and just sort of poke at it like this, but I don't really have to. Um, there's sort of other ways I can access it since, uh, you know, it's just part of the grid now. So rather than like, you know, sort of using it the way you'd use, you know, uh, uh, X over a network or VNC or something, I can just also, you know, pull in, um, anything I'm sort of interested in running on it. So right now I have it set up to uh, boot up and run the um, uh, start up a driver for the GPS, the temperature, humidity, CO2 sensor, and the LCD display, along with also talking to my uh, smart light bulbs.
And I could do that by, say, um, let's see here. I could just import into, oops, import from LabPy uh, that CO2 sensor. I'll put it into N. And there we go. I can now, you know, find out how the air in my room is doing. It prints out. You know, the CO2, the temperature, and the humidity. So now basically what this means is sort of like, you know, this little thin T, you know, terminal now has a GPS unit on it. I could also do something like import from my pi, the GPS unit. And same sort of thing here. I now uh, just added the GPS unit from the Pi into the namespace of the terminal. I can get things. I can see how it's doing here. Uh, one of the things I was interested in is getting the uh, time off of it. So there we go. We get you know atomic clock time downloaded from the GPS satellites. So I can also share this uh, little LCD display here with the rest of the grid. So I can import it onto the terminal here. Lab Pi, that was under it's LCDFS. I can bring it in. So the way I wrote this driver is that every row is a different um, a different file. So I could put hello into row one. It's kind of hard to see on there. There we go. Let me get that set up so it's more readable. And like I typically use this when I'm actually running it, I'll run like a script and it will read the um, you know the CO2 sensor and and just sort of post the uh, uh, you know the CO2 and the temperature in the room along with just running a clock it just updates it and and just echoes in the time you know so it's just a text file I can write whatever I want into it so whatever row four so yeah I can use this to uh, you know make it accessible to anything in the grid any other machine can. Uh, access it uh, it's just a text file so I can just run any kind of script to you know post notifications of inbound emails or other messages and uh, also you know this thing runs as my own private uh, you know light bulb system so let's see imports from lab pi this is the driver I wrote specifically for the uh, whiz light bulbs um, I know you can get Philips branded ones and Wiz branded ones. And uh, pull that in. And same thing, I wrote the driver for this and I just made them look like um, like text files. So right now, the this space right now is being lit by um, two bulbs on arms, so arm two and three. I can do things like, uh, let's see, let's make them turn red. Full red for arm two. And just to get the full effect here, we'll do uh, arm three also. So now you can see the light turned rather red. So yeah, and this means I'm running my own private, um, you know, light bulb control system off a of Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is just a device that you know runs off a USB wall wart. Um, and so yeah. So the idea is, you know, you can play around with you know nine front or plan nine grids um, and not use a whole bunch of uh, you know large power hungry computers. I picked a file server with um, 
you know, low heat CPU and extra space for hard drives, a terminal with an even smaller, you know, CPU that runs off a wall wart. Um, now I have this, you know, uh, custom sort of internet of things like device that runs on an ARM CPU off a USB plug. So other operating systems sort of allow for intercommunication um, and this sort of stuff. But in plan nine, it's not like an optional thing. This isn't some add on package. It's the norm. It provides simple tools to get everything talking to each other in a standard way. And I hope this gives people an idea of the kinds of hardware that can be added to a Plan 9 grid. And in the meantime, have fun.